Welcome to Forever Unbreakable. Uh, I've got two surprise guests, so this is a very impromptu. Uh, there's no real, no real plan here. So, on the other side of the camera, I have my best friend since freshman year of high school, Sodi Patrick Soderland, and Jason Braun, who I met in 2013 uh, when he thought he would join us for the charity ruck march. So today we are going to talk about whatever is on our mind, um, but we're going to touch the most on that unbreakable thought, how we feel about other people being unbreakable, and how we got to unbreakable ourselves. Uh, so I will let um, Jason and Sodi both give you a small little bit of their background um, and where they come from over the next couple of minutes. Go ahead, boys. I thought, I thought we were just going to talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that was the plan. <laughs> we'll get well, all, leave, leave off, got leave all official off. on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, I'm Jason. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yes, I am. No um, name tape needed. I'm here because I do stupid shit with Will, basically. Yeah, so Jason is also a business owner of Apex Heating yeah, and Cooling. Yeah, that shit, whatever. He's also a high school nope. dropout. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> but he's one of my best friends, so it's awesome. Hey, I didn't drop out, by the way. I I I ran the whole course. I just <laughs> I just didn't get credit for all of it. It wasn't for me at the end. This <laughs> yeah. isn't for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like awesome. like Will said, man. I've I've known him since high school. Um, just day one, walking into a lunchroom, and and I said, "Let's at your wedding," and it's just kind of incumbents like everything that has been you and I is just. You're the only kid sitting by yourself, and I was the only kid by myself, so we hit it off the bat right then and there and kicked my ass on the wrestling mats for quite some time. and then For about a year, <laughs> and then the tables turned. Yeah. And I was heavier, yeah. so I should have been beating his ass a lot longer than that. Dude, you were heavier when you were 11 than you are right now. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Keto sucks. This, man, this man's in shape, <laughs> sir. Keto is not fun. <laughs> you know, and then just like uh, the infectious personality you have, man, like we've just been best friends since, and... Do likewise for both of you guys, and I think yeah. one of the I think one of the things that we all have that the three of us have in common is we all have extremely Type A personalities, and we hate losing at anything, uh, whatever that might be. So, you know, for myself right now, I got the world record thing where it's it's more against myself than it is than it is anything else, and I just don't want to lose. Um, so deep, as now a member of of the Air Force. Yeah. Uh, and got his ass kicked through um, the PJ indoctrination process, learning yeah. how to swim and stuff. And I remember before you went to a recruiter <laughs> the first time, we were like, let's see what the numbers are. And and then you went and talked to a recruiter, and, and we went to the YMCA. And you were like, I'm just going to do as many push-ups as I can. Yeah. And then I'll worry about the sit-ups and the swim after. Yeah. And I was like... I don't think you're going to get that, through the pull-ups, bro. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one way to do it. I mean, it even goes back before that because um, I used to work F-16s and, you know, all my boys are doing, you know, you, you for example, is just doing big, bigger and better things, coming to Ranger and getting that tab and, <clears throat> you know, living that lifestyle and it's just, it, I needed to do more. And I think, I think from the start, you were just like, I, I came to you and I'm like, hey, man, like, what's, what's the next thing I should do? I should, should I join the Army and, you know, maybe be a Ranger? And you're like, no, you had that, that smile that you always do because I knew you were setting me up for something. I just didn't know what it was. And you said, you got to stay in the Air Force, but you should go be a PJ. And I was like, well, what's that? And he goes, it's probably one of the hardest things you can ever do in the Air Force. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I was young. And I said, sure, let's, let's do this. So I walked into a recruiter, and the look on his face when I'm, you know, a cross trainee says, I want to be a PJ. And he goes, I've heard that every single day of my life. Yeah. So, yeah, you didn't invent that idea. It's, too. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like going into a Navy recruiter and being like, I'm going to be a SEAL. I'm, or, be a Navy or, or, I'm going to be a Ranger or Special well, Force. I'm the next Tim Kennedy. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, what, okay, kid. What you're going to need to do is go to the Y and work on that pec shelf, and then you'll be ready. Yeah. yeah. You get those push ups in. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that really started the process, was even before we got to the pool. And it goes all the way back to the wrestling mat when Will's like, You ever wrestled before? And I said, No. He gets this smile on his face. And um, that just you just know you're you're in for something, and it's it's probably going to test you to the fullest limit, man. And so yeah, I went to the pool, didn't have any idea what I was doing, and starts pushing me through push-ups, and I I can do push-ups, and he starts pushing me through sit-ups, I can do sit-ups. Body's starting to get fatigued, and he goes, all right, start hanging on that bar, let's get some 13 pull-ups, and I wow, I maybe got like seven, if that. Yeah, and they before that, how many pull-ups could you do had you not have done push-ups or sit-ups? 
Uh, I was up in the twenties. Yeah, like killing it. <laughs> was, yeah. But just never, 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 never tried it that way. No. And that's yeah. what was like. For me, it was the same thing. The first time that that I said, "Yep, I'm gonna go to ranger school." And they're like, "You gotta do six pull-ups." And I was like, "Too easy." And they're not even pull-ups; they're the chin-ups, hands in, like yeah. even easier. And I remember doing the push-ups, the sit-ups, the five-mile run, and then I got to the pull-ups, and I was like, "Or chin-ups, my bad." And I was like, three. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my neck needs. <laughs> yep. And you're just looking at the instructor like, "Please count that. Please yeah. count that." Like, give me some points, man. <laughs> yeah. And then it just it just started from there. I, I knew what I got into, and then. Like a lot of you know, I will train. So, next thing you know, we're doing five in the morning, hour swims, getting out of the pool time. I was hitting the weights. I was running with Will, and I was next thing you know, he's talking me into running marathons. And yeah, which by the way, I want to touch on that marathon story right quick, because Jason actually had to correct somebody. What was it? Two days ago? Yeah, I think it was uh, Thursday, I believe. Yeah. So, <laughs> we're we're getting ready to. I'm getting ready to run the Silicon Marathon. I've trained and trained and trained and trained. And so he's sitting on the porch the night before, like, drinking some beer, staring at Lambo. He's like, I bet I can run that marathon tomorrow. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> there ain't no way. And, I mean, now there's a Manchester thing that I would have used, and I would have gotten slapped in the face for it. But at the time, Manchester didn't exist. And so he's still like, I'm going to have a couple more beers, you know. And I think we broke the whiskey out after that. Yeah. The shocking thing is that this isn't normal to most people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that, this sounds it sounds totally reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Well, we all get it. So we, we get to the start line. And I'm, I've been training. So I get a, I get a nice hefty lead on Sodi. And by hefty, I've, I've probably got a good mile lead, you know, by the halfway point. Yeah. Mile 17, I'm walking because I'm hurting, and here comes Sodi hopping along. He's like, hey, what's up, Will? Didn't expect to see you. And I was like, we might be best friends, but I think we're going to have one of those fights right now. <laughs> yeah. Tor- tortoise in the hair. I've heard yeah, this one. It was, uh, even to back it up a little bit more, like, you know, my mouth has gotten me into more situations than I can count, and we've all been there, but I didn't have any running shoes. I you know, I ran yeah. in my Air Force PT because those are the only shorts that were like running <laughs> shorts. So obviously, I looked like one of those guys out there with all my America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No shirt and Air Force PT shorts. I'm sure that went well with the recruiter, but. Would have been an awesome meme on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Had we have thought about yeah, it. Yeah, back the time. then before memes. <laughs> um, went and bought a brand new pair of shoes, and Will's like, You should probably try to run in those before, you know, you just do it. And I was like, well, All right, you know, you run. And I ran a couple laps around the block, and my shins hurt so bad. And I was like, well, I, I already got myself into something, so we're going to do it. And then the day of the race, like, Will, Will and uh, our good buddy Nick, <clears throat> he, they're, they're ready to go. They're, like, at the start line, you know. They're waiting for that gun to go off and just take off. And sure enough, they do. They just, whew, they're gone. I throw my music in, and I just kind of coast because I'm like, I got to. This isn't, this, yeah, for me, this, well, this, race. for me, this is survival. This is, I just, I just got to you know, walk the walk since I definitely talk it, you know. <laughs> um, but that's the best part of you. Like, man of your word. A hundred percent. When you say you're going to do something, you see it all the way through yeah. to the end. Well, that's all of us. That's that's what brings us, that's why we're all such yeah. great friends is because, you know, you're going to say something and then you can trust your boy's going to do that or they're always going to be there for you when they say they're going to be there for you. You know, you never question it. And I've had friends where you, you, you reach out and you're like, hey, man, like, I need help with this. And they're like, oh, bye. yeah, I'm kind of busy right now. Yeah. yeah. That, that's called an acquaintance, brother. Yeah. yeah, yeah right? That's yeah. not a real friend. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. The friend's for the sure. one that you call and he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to be there. You tell me when, where, and, and what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even you need don't to know to... what we're doing. Yeah, I just, exactly. I'll be there. You <laughs> know, and that, that, I'm sure that'll be another story we can, we yeah. can jump into. But then I ran up to uh, get back to the marathon. I saw this guy just struggling. And I was like, man. And that was from a distance, too. Like he, he was struggling hard. And. I run up. I was like, "Oh shit, that's that's fucking well." Hey, what? What are you doing? I mean, I could just see it. I mean, he was just his knee was hurting, and just all that preparation had, had really caught up to him. And um, I was making a million excuses at the time, yeah, to quit. But the, oh, I was so like, comfortable "Man, now, aren't they? I need to quit." And then when I saw yeah. Sodi, I was like, "He didn't even train. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna roll by me like a." Like I'm standing still, or like what do they say? And like racing or whatever, like you're on jack stands, yeah, changing just, your tires or something. Right, like right. that's that's what I felt like. I was like, God, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it, it, it was it was crazy because like I caught up to him and I said, Hey, bro, like we're gonna finish this out. And he was just, No, you don't. No, no you got to go get a time. Like you got to finish under five hours. And I looked at him and I said, No, I I didn't run this race to finish that time. I ran this race to be with my boys. I just yeah. wasn't fast enough to stay up. And then now I'm with you, dude. We're going to finish this. And there's a picture of us 
Um, I'm sure it's flown around on Facebook somewhere of us crossing the line at the same time yeah. with each other, you know, and you can just see that, that, that drive to just finish was there. And we went out and enjoyed some, many of brews many after of that. Cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> And it was it was just a good experience. So then when Will told me about Pararescue, I just felt I felt like I just signed up for another marathon, and I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, but he was there the whole ride. I mean, every day. Uh, it was funny. I was cleaning out a, a <clears throat> one of my lockers. Uh, sorry, a drawer in my locker. And I found this note, and on top of it is Wisconsin National Guard post-it note on top of the, the letterhead, and it says, "Open this when you really need it." And I never opened it, but I saw. I, I cracked it open. I pulled it out. It was a letter that Will had given to me when times were getting too hard to read this. And so I read it. And I'm, I'm sorry, this is during in-doc training when, I, <clears throat> when I'd opened it because I wasn't supposed to open it prior to leaving. And I opened it up, and just the words that were on there were just, you, you don't quit. Like, you just give it all you got. You help everybody through it. You know, just just do the marathon the way you're going to do the marathon, and, and you'll finish. And... Two and a half years later, now I'm an operational pararescue rescue man, and this yeah, is because of the dream. Just, living the dream, man. I see you rock climbing and shit all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah, the surround. Yeah, yeah. I, I always send you guys snaps of the crazy stuff, jumping out of planes or yeah. oh, shooting guns. Oh, oh, oh you mean paid vacation? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah paid yeah. vacation. Yeah, TDY. Yeah, yeah, we call yeah. it TDY. The shit that I pay to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that skydiving experience that's three hundred bucks every jump. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, we got you, Bo. They just paid me to do this it's a, it's a real issue yeah. but it was how, how many months were you in the pipeline like how long did it take to get from the day that you showed up at indoc and they were like we're gonna drown you and if you don't drown yeah you stand a chance to be a pj well, but like we're gonna try and drown you not even not even just we're gonna drown you we're gonna make you quit every, yeah. every single step of the way yeah and like how many people started how many people quit so you know, what was left when you when you got to the end of just indoc and we that's not even getting into the technical stuff we started out with 116 and we graduated i believe 12 guys oh yeah. no i'm sorry 16 guys from indoc and then after the two and a half year pipeline it was 12 dudes stood there for the berets yeah two Legit. and a half years Legit. yeah where people and what what did what award did you get when you graduated i got the arthur black award and he was a, a pararescue and pow that um kept his morale high he was he was known for Picking the guys up that were down, that wanted to quit, that really were going to check out as as prisoners and and kind of give up on that you know that hope that someone's going to come save you, and he was the one that kept them straight, kept their faith, kept them positive and and focused on the mission at hand because everything's a mission. Yeah, he was the guy who he was the guy who cared about his teammates absolutely more than anybody else, and that's, that's and that's the one forward. thing that like when I got the chance to talk to all of Sody's teammates at his graduation and stuff, that's the one thing they said they're like. Man, this man would have done anything for us at any time. Give us a shirt off his back, whatever we need. Like he was gonna do it, and that and that to me is like the start of the definition of unbreakable. To me, is like I'm only unbreakable because of the people that Absolutely. surround me. You know, when I'm having a bad time, I call Jason or Sodi, and I'm like, one of you boys needs to pick me up. I got to do some serious training tomorrow, or I got to do this, or I got to take this test, and like, I I don't want to. I got to finish this college paper, or whatever it is. I just don't want to. I call one of these two guys, and every single time, they're like, "You can take tomorrow off, Will. You can rest some other day. Like, yeah, finish the job that you started. Don't be a quitter. Like, I'm not friends with quitters. You know, things like that. And they keep That's me the... motivated. And and it's that yeah. group that keeps you unbreakable. I really believe that it's, it's not an individual task. It's a team that that is around you. That's the point right there. Yeah, they, I, I can't tell you how many times I was on a rest day. And it's not like I called you for motivation. You know, we just shoot the shit because yeah. you know, most of the time I'm 2,000 miles away. So we talk about everything under the sun, takes a million left and right turns. And, yeah. and somewhere in that conversation, it always turns back to the thing that we're always discussing, which is just getting out and getting after it. And I'll get off the phone and be like, 9.30 at night, but I think it's time for a run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even if it's not that, it's like, I need to, I need to do this with my business or this with my education yeah. or this. Like, yeah. like, I look at the stuff that somebody's doing and – um, we took our first responder class together yeah. and I had like the basic military knowledge and I'm watching Sody try and like learn this stuff and do this stuff. And I was like, 
boy, you know PJs do medical. Like, like that's yeah, their so specialty. We're, we're taking this class, right? This is going to help me. Oh, God, I was so far behind the power recruiter on that oh, stuff. Oh, I, I thought this whole yeah. shit was just for hangover IVs. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Which, good. it's good. It's good. It's good. Which, it's good for showing your friends how to do IVs in their yeah. trunk. <laughs> Which Jason has actually learned how to do an IV now. Yeah, true story. Yeah. So, There's a lot of blood involved. There's a lot yeah, of blood. We yeah. got to it. Hey, your wife cleaned it up. Steph was yeah, not we, pleased with the yeah. kitchen table. <laughs> My beautiful wife was not Looked impressed. Like someone may have butchered something on, on your table. <laughs> oh, she's just she's so used to it. I mean, it's in the community, like everybody is this way. Like we're always yeah. doing crazy stuff and we're always pushing limits. So she's seen it from top to I mean, she's been with me since the start from my crazy ideas of going to swim at five in the morning to yeah. hey, I'm gonna leave for yeah, it's impressive, man. Months it's impressive at a time. when you when you tell her like, hey, here's the here's the dream. Yep. So for like the next several months, we aren't going to have much contact because I'm going into this yeah. this pipeline process, and I I don't know when I'll get a phone. I don't know, you know, how email is going to work and all that. And, and she stayed true. Which oh, is, she's you phenomenal, know, man. It's awesome. And now she puts up with all sorts of stuff <laughs> like, hey, I'm gonna buy a mountain bike, get into mountain biking. And when we went mountain biking with you, like we had a blast. And Jason put it best. He was like, dude. I can crush this because I'm in the hands of eight PJs. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the me. most comfortable I've ever been with the idea of ending up with a compound fracture. I'm like, I'm good, man. Yeah. These guys are going to fashion something, cut down a tree, build me a splint. It'll be fine. You'll get out of there. You know, yeah, exactly. We'll get you a beer at the end. It, it was crazy because you know, I was like, how many times have you ever run a mountain bike? You're like, I think it's my second time, <laughs> maybe. And you were well, you were sending dude, it over gaps looked, and off of kickers that like, way we weren't us. even hitting, dude. It was awesome. I, I got to be That's a little disingenuous. Because I did do some cross country stuff, so no terrain, no jumps, no downhill. Yeah, I mean, nothing as gnarly as, as we had did, we had done. But I, you know, I'd, I've done a Dude, little bit of cross country. Nonetheless, it was legit. Yeah, yeah. it was fun, man. Well, it was even, a good time. Yeah, it was a blast. So yeah, but you know what? I'm kind of pissed because now I've been cruising Craigslist and offer up <laughs> every day looking for a legit downhill mountain <laughs> Dude, bike. I'm yeah. trying to buy a downhill mountain bike. Get on and pink. Like, get on pink bike. Just, and I, they, oh, God they damn it! You see, no, <laughs> man. store it at my house. I got it. I got you guys. <laughs> I'll have a plethora of bikes yeah. to have. Because I don't have mountain from. biking here compared to like what you had there and the beauty like of the mountain. So Sody lives in Vegas now. Jason lives in, in San Diego for, you know, Jason for the majority of the month and, and Sody all year round. And uh, Sody takes us up into the mountains of Las Vegas. And Las Vegas to me is like Sin City. I'm going to go party my face off. Because we did that the night before for yeah. New Year's. I need to max out two credit cards. Like. <laughs> <laughs> spend my savings account or I haven't been to Las Vegas and uh, I don't know that I'll ever see the strip again when I go like honestly I have so much more fun at the pool parties off the strip or the mountains and things like that mm -hmm. that like it just it opened my eyes up to Vegas having something else Vegas yeah. has everything like yeah. Yeah. it's crazy yeah. and it's so chill when we're there you know what we'd make yeah. a nice dinner have a bottle of wine you know <laughs> yeah yeah, talk, talk about our book club. Yeah, yeah so, so end up like with that three of us in the bathtub at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was hashtag wild. no homo. Yeah, yeah. hashtag that was Sometimes we crazy drink too night. much. <laughs> uh, even just just starting that back off, like it, you know, Will had come out. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna come visit you for New Year's." Him and Chelsea came out, <clears throat> so him, Steph and I were ready for that. And my guys wanted to party. They were in town. The next thing you know, Jason calls like, "What are you guys doing?" We're like, "Um." We're going to do a suit night for New Year's. What are you doing? He's like, I'm on my way to Las Vegas right now. Yeah. We're like, get here. <laughs> so then he shows up. We just, we have. That's we, friendships right there. Bro, man. and it's, that's how it always works. Like, you're, right. you don't realize how close you are until the next thing you know, you're like, you're all in the same spot. Yeah. You're literally a two or four hour drive away and you're there. Yeah, dude. And cra Jason's crazy enough that he just packed up the truck and just, just came. Oh, that's sure. what I love about Jason. It's like, four, you're like, what was it, four or five hours? I mean, yeah. whatever. I you're just drove 10, man. It was a blast. We had a good time. Yeah. We, driving. we danced on top of a Vegas bar. Like, that's something usually we only do in Green Bay. We were shirts off dancing <laughs> on top of a Vegas bar. Like, yeah. All my teammates were like, and they're pretty wild. They looked at us, they're like, this is where everybody gets kicked out. And then they looked over at the, <laughs> the, manager, the regional manager of the bar was in there, and she just goes, thumbs just up. And we're just, She's like, Stay up there. I'll give you guys some shots. We're yeah. dude, pounding that, shots. That on was. The bar. I mean, we all like you're 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 accepting the consequences <laughs> the second you decide to step on a bar yeah. without permission. Yeah. I feel like you know. I, I feel like there should be a slideshow or something for this part. I mean, not with us with our shirt offs. That that'd be weird. But <laughs> but there's enough pictures on Facebook but, that I could make a slideshow. But people yeah. need to understand what kind of bar this is. This yeah. is not. I, it's like a Buffalo Wild Wings, basically, right? Yeah, because we, we, I mean, we decided like, not to go to the strip. It was too expensive. What was the name of the bar? Uh, 
But PT's gold. Yeah, PT's gold. It's right down the street from where we were living. Everybody was really centralized. We didn't want to go to the strip and deal with the crowds and the two hundred dollar fees. Oh, and that's all super day. funny. See, I thought it was PJs the whole time, yeah. which was super because we took it coincidental. Over. Yeah. We took it over. <laughs> it pretty um, much was owned by yeah, PJs. Pretty much PJs. Was it was. It was awesome. A bunch we, of PJs and Jason and I. Yeah. <laughs> well, was, and you say Jason and I, but the funny thing that I'm realizing as we've been talking here for like twenty minutes, I'm like, I'm sitting in here and I got a. Ranger qualified, eleven Bravo, combat veteran. I got a PJ, and I fix furnaces for a living. But uh, you do this. this. See, that's some bullshit. <laughs> so I just want to clear this I wanna, up right I wanna now. Duck right yeah. out of the frame. Just get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the, so here's the thing with Jason. Right, is Jason shows up to the first ruck march, street shoes, no pack, nothing like that, and he. Before, hey man, I had a bitch in Land's End backpack. Before the thing me. even starts, you're like, yep, I'm a sweatshirt gonna, in it. Jan Sport. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna probably show up and I'm like I don't know who this Jason Brown guy is who cares like come on out rock with us like we want to raise a bunch of money and you're and you will help us do that so Jason comes up and I, I thought he, my reputation was better than that but and he he jumps in halfway through and he just falls in love with the event to where he comes back the next year and he's like Apex Heating and Cooling will be the top donor and and he was absolute man of his word but he also said I'm gonna carry a whole bunch of weight and it wasn't until, what, two years after that that you actually carried a whole bunch of weight? Yeah, what was it? I think did the they follow- 80 some pounds? Yeah, I think the following year did... You had to miss I had to miss them. the following year. Yeah. Just work commitments couldn't, couldn't make it happen. Uh, it was the, so, yeah, it was, it was two years later before I, I, before I actually did the whole march. Yeah. yeah. And again, top donor, like... And that's when we switched over to using Apex for our Operation Cold Snap. It changed a bunch of stuff. And since then, we've uh, put in, what, nine furnaces total, I think? Ten Dude, furnaces? I think it's more than that now. Yeah. yeah it's a lot. Plus, plus thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of upgrades. But Jason shows up 82-pound pack, right? Or was it more than it was 80. 87? 80, 80 it was, pounds? It was 80. 80 before. I think it probably was more after because I sweated my soul into it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason, Jason shows up with this, and I'm like, this boy's rocked maybe – maybe 10 times in your life prior to that oh you give me way too much credit <laughs> yeah <laughs> will's getting i was he like yeah yeah he's bit. trying to make me sound good right now uh by rucked I, does it like getting on the school bus count yeah like yeah, carrying basically, it to and from school yeah. so jason's done less than a handful of times and he shows up with this 80 pound pack and he's like yeah i'm i'm, I'm going heavy i want to be like you guys you and know i was like <laughs> i would be hard <laughs> I, a lot of dudes carry pillows <laughs> like there's nothing wrong with that it just looks and, big and uh, I say that a lot. I remember looking at Jason at the turnaround point. And this is when it was still 22 miles, and we're at mile 11 ish. And Jason's just like, oh, "This is a long ways away from where we started. Because this is straight out and back course." <laughs> Dude, I wrote a rubber check that day. <laughs> there was no getting around, but I couldn't tap out. You can't. Yeah. No, and that's I, the one thing. Not actually. And that's the one. <laughs> I, I, I would never leave. I never hear the end of it. The, yeah. the only pain that would have been worse than what I went through with my feet and the lack of fitness that I that I had to do that particular activity that day. Just the only thing that would have been worse would have been to tap doing out. it. Yeah, this this story would go a lot different. You guys wouldn't let me live it down. No, we would still have it on the podcast. We would just tell it differently. Yeah. So this one time when yeah. Jason quit, yeah. Yeah. unfortunately or fortunately, not unfortunately, but fortunately, that's never happened for any of us where we've quit like broke, but never ever yeah. have the words like. We've never quit. So, like, and that's the one thing that I think, you know, stands out the most is, like, Jason during that. So Jason's a civilian. He's never been in the military. He could have quit. Like, who's there holding you? And it's the one thing that we talked about at the CELCOM because Jason's going to carry 100 pounds as long as he can with me at the CELCOM, and hopefully it's the whole distance and we cross the finish line together uh, with 100 pounds. But, like, right now there's a whole bunch of people depending on me to do that you know, to raise awareness or, or more than that, even to raise the funds. And Jason's going to have almost a harder time because he doesn't have anybody holding him accountable right. to, to carry that weight. And I think oh, he that does. Yeah, yeah, he's does. got us. You start it. You yeah. start it. And, you and I, it. I got me. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your biggest credit to yourself. You yeah. Know? But I think, it, I think that's a big statement of like the unbreakableness uh, of yourself as well as like when you don't have anybody holding you accountable. And I mean, I'm going to hold you accountable. You know that. I'm definitely you better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now that I saw your pack, that's why, that's why I love you guys. Yeah, Sony had to fix the pack, and it's still not fixed. So, 
Dude, it's been there's been bumps in the road to say the least. This is this hasn't hasn't gone well. It yeah, hasn't no. gone easy. No, but that's that's, that's, a, that's a journey, man. Nobody likes a smooth road. No, yeah, man. And, and, I, and it's boring. Nobody loves a good story like I do. So if this, when when this thing comes good, not if when uh, yeah. this thing comes good, it's gonna be it's gonna be sweeter. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, just getting over some sickness and stuff. Couldn't log many miles till. What, you started logging some decent miles two weeks ago, three weeks ago? You know, right about the time that I wanted to get serious about training was when I started having all these issues, and it all started yeah. with an injury. I mean, I had a, I had an injury, just kind of tweaked something in jiu-jitsu. It wasn't serious. It was just a, a tear in my in, in my, my pec muscle. and I, yeah, man, just I just tear. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't rip off the yeah, bone Yeah, most people throw anything. the shirt out after you tear yeah. it, but Jason's <laughs> just going to, yeah. I'm going to keep wearing it. Yeah. Uh, no, so I, it, it, just, it just wouldn't heal, wouldn't heal, wouldn't heal, and I and, uh, got better for a little while and then got worse, and... Uh, that happened to coordinate with my body just falling apart yeah. top to bottom. I couldn't, I couldn't run a mile or two and, and couldn't figure out what was going on and spare all the gory details. I, I figured out what's going on with that. Got it hopefully on the uh, road to recovery. And, yeah. I mean, you, know. you just knocked out, we just did a 16 mile rock with a hundred pounds. I mean, we broke the pack, what, twice we had to put it back yeah, together? Two, three times. We had a little, <laughs> yeah. little break on the side of the road. Yeah. Which is great when you're bending over, like <laughs> hunched over, trying to muscle a 100 pound pack around and yep. get things put back together. Yep. And then you stand back up and you feel like you're 85. Well, and the it's worst part is that you have to put it back on. And once you take it off, if you haven't moved 100 pounds from the ground to your back ever, I recommend trying it. It will. It'll humble you a yeah, little bit. It will. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's my recommendation for the like six people who are listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> go find Three yourself. Three of them are in this room right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, go, go find Two yourself. Two are upstairs. Yeah. Go find yourself a good strong backpack and and shore that thing up with whatever you have to and and go get yourself a, a sandbag or something. You know, just whatever whatever it is. It's 50, 50 pounds, hundred pounds. If you want to understand uh, what what we're going through, just pick. Talk that thing about up. the first time that we put the packs on our back. Or oh, how, that was great. So like the idea came to be over some drinks. And I was trying to look at like the best way to raise more money um, for Hua. It kind of is like where it eventually led to Guinness World Record, and this was November-ish of 2016. Yeah. So it was right after the ruck march that year, after I had just done the Ironman as an idiot with a rucksack. Um, but it was a good fundraiser, so we were trying to find a way that we could use our physical abilities um, to generate money and this whole unbreakable spirit and stuff like that. And so, you know, the, the unbreakableness has been there f for a while, and we just started to figure that out around this time. And so we came up with this record idea, and then Jason and I were like, well, let's try it. Let's see what, what 100 pounds feels like. And I don't think the first time, I think we only had like 90-something in there. I don't think we went to the full 100 the first yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I, we never weighed the packs, but I was counting on whatever it said on the bag of like, yeah, like silica sand or whatever yeah. the heck I whatever <laughs> I bought to weight that ruck down. Yeah. yeah, dog food. I don't yeah. know something, but yeah, we we um that was after the eighty pound uh, yeah. ruck march. Yeah, right? you had done the eighty already. So that's kind of what got me thinking. I'm going well, you know. 80. I think you did the eighty that year. Maybe, maybe. No, it was the year before. It was 2015. Yeah, yeah, because it would have been after yep. that. And I just remember thinking that, you know, 80 pounds is cool, but 100 sounds way better. Yeah. You yeah. Know, just add better. that third digit. Yeah. sounds oh, legit. Yeah. And uh, I knew it was going to be heavy, but something funny happens when you pick it. Well, the, the funny thing was I set it up on this, on, the, on a, a step outside my shop, and I packed all this weight into there, and I put the thing on my shoulders, and I went to stand up, and I literally, I, I, don't, I think my butt came off the ground about a half an inch, and I <laughs> fell right back down. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my God. Here we go. I made it from my office to Ridge Road. For those of you not familiar with Green Bay, that's about 200 meters. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not a quarter mile. It might be a quarter mile. Tops. By the time I got back, it might have been a quarter mile. Yeah. But there was all kinds of fuck this. I, <laughs> I, threw, the, I threw the weights in the garbage. I, I'm done. No, I'm going to stick to it. Yeah, at one point, we didn't think it was possible unless we were willing to fly to England to break the record. Because yeah. the original record was like 740, 750. Or, yeah, yeah, 7 hours, 40 minutes, or 7 hours, 50 minutes for the marathon. And we were like, Cellcom was only open for 7 hours. Almost every race in the U.S. is, is only open 7 hours yeah. for a marathon. That meets the Guinness requirements being USA track and field and all the other stuff that they got to be. And Jason and I were looking at each other like, I don't know if anybody can go under 7 hours. And then somebody did. Yeah, they solved that problem. So, yep, they said that. Yeah, Mark bar. Jenner, dude, and I yeah. was like, Man, save now it's time. Tickets. Yeah, now it's time to get serious about it, and and that's brought us to today. Who's got the record now? Uh, Mark Jenner. Mark uh, Jenner. Shout out to Mark Jenner. Yeah, yeah. yeah shout out to him, man. That's awesome. That's a retarded record. He actually had the eighty pound record. 
Uh, and then the hundred pound half marathon and marathon records. Dude, awesome. I give I give that guy so, tons of credit because he's he's getting he's going back out there and getting after it again. Because when this thing is over, I am not touching a backpack again unless it's got something fun to play with in it. There's no <laughs> way. I'm not. <laughs> Count me out. Yeah. This this has been painful enough. I I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm out. My uh, my marathon ruck career is over. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the curtain. No, and that's what we're talking about. One of the what's next that Jason and I have been talking about is running a ultra marathon. And we want to get Put that yeah out in the universe like yeah that. I'm putting it on here too that we want to get after a, a hundred miler at some point in the next year or two so that's gonna that's gonna come up but that's a, a what's next goal that we talked about like man if we if we yeah. ditch the weight like hundred oh. pounds that's got to equate to what 50, 60, 70 miles like <laughs> we'll, we'll make all kinds of excuses <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll, we'll justify come up with some, yeah, we'll come up with some weird math but it turns out twenty six point two miles with a packer without a pack is still only twenty six point two miles yeah. You know, and a hundred miles is a hundred miles. Do you got a pack or not? Like. Your wife did baton. Yeah, I she mean, crushed it. Phenomenal. And, and it. smashed it. Yeah, didn't just do it. I and she, it. she I smashed it. it. And she still's like, I never did a marathon because I had to walk during that. I'm like, I walked during every marathon <laughs> I've ever done. <laughs> and we're in Long sand up to our ankles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, well, you're gonna walk. My yeah. three hour and some change marathon. I walked a bunch of it. Like yeah. the last three miles, I was like. Well, not fast enough for Boston. I'm going to walk in. I grabbed a beer. And, and that's been one of the traditions, too, is we've always grabbed a beer on the Cellcom course. Yep. And that won't be happening this year maybe, until the end. Maybe three, four meters from the finish yeah, line. Yeah, from the finish yeah, line. We might yeah. crack a cold maybe, one. Maybe get one right before you, cra- you cross the finish <laughs> line and you know you've gotten that, that record under the belt and you can just take a, just a sip, just so you keep the tradition there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the one thing that I want to ask you guys, too, while I've got you on here, is to define unbreakable, like – what what it means to you to be unbreakable and then also like why you think people might not be unbreakable or what they need to do to get there like to me unbreakable is just a mindset and it's because i'm surrounded by people and they keep pushing me and keep me in the game i'm able to remain unbreakable Mm -hmm. but to me it's just a mindset of like i'm not going to quit i can you know i'm just not going to quit no matter what happens i'm just going to keep going so how would you guys define define unbreakable or define yourselves as being unbreakable? With what you guys have done, I look at you guys as both being more unbreakable than me. Oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I do. Like, I'm just it up. He's yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the microphones yeah, on. Another, as soon as this stuff off, he's like, you're another both my sip bitch. of water. <laughs> he's, got, he's got snare in his headphones. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I, I'll take this one off the bat. Like, Well, I'm going to build on what you said. Not only is it a mindset, but you got to see how you take failure, how you take, yeah. you know, if you get knocked off, like Jason said, he picked up a 100-pound ruck, walked 400 meters and then threw it down and said, I'm done with it. Yeah. That's uh, he could have broke right there. You know, unbreakable is getting back on that horse, putting the pack back on. And now he's signed up to go as far as he can with you on this LCOM. Like, you know, a lot of people have that mindset and they have that support, but you got to really challenge yourself to, you know, pick up something that's defeated you or challenged you to the point where you couldn't finish it and finish it. You know, it, it kind of reminds me back to Indoc. A lot of people, like one of the sayings in Indoc is, who ya never quit. Yeah. You know, and we tap a sign that says never quit. People write it in their masks when they're doing underwaters and finning. And, and about that, how many quit? I mean, you just got done telling us what the attrition rate was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. even with that attitude spread through an so, entire group of so people. You, you yeah. still get guys 95%, that, 90%, yeah. whatever the math is, it's you, over 90%. Like, right. my, math, my math is about high school level which i didn't even really pay attention i think i cheated yeah. off a will to get through it um, that's scary but one of the things and i was thinking Very about scary. this is like i was a c student yeah <laughs> yeah so you can imagine where i ended up spells like shit um, it's it, you see these people quit and it just it, it it built this fire in me that i never wrote down never quit i never wore a shirt that said never quit never wrote it in a, a book or in my mask or you know, you do the traditional touch the hoodie and never quit, but if quit is, if you have to remind yourself every day to not quit because you had to write it down, you're going to quit. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. in your bloodstream. It's yeah. going to spread and it's going it, to, it's just waiting for that right moment to take you out. So you just got to take it like, like Dan Doyne, he said, he takes can out of his vocabulary. You got to take quit out of your vocabulary. That's, that's not even an option. Because as soon as it becomes an option, it's the easiest option oh, you can man, take. It and it's so comfortable yeah. and it's... Yeah. Quitting's it's, easy, It's man. so Quitting's easy to do. It feels so good. Yeah. Until until you actually quit. Yeah. And you can't turn around. And you have to start all over again. And then it's the worst to the floor feeling. It's uh, To me, it's what I would consider rock bottom. 
And when yeah. you quit something, you hit rock bottom. And so for that unbreakable aspect to add on to what you're saying with the mindset is you get back on that and you, you finish out what you started. And there's a saying in a lot of, uh, in the special operations is if we start this, we finish it. And you start it. And like yeah. Jason's saying, he's like, I'll go as far as I can. Well, bro, if you start it, you're going to finish it. Yeah. How, yeah. how you finish I'm, it? I'm going to finish it. There might not be anybody there when I get there, but I <laughs> oh, will they'll finish. Be, no, they'll be, they'll, you, that's what's awesome about our friendship is there'll be people, they might not be sober, <laughs> but they will be there <laughs> for you. 9.30 at night, but, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, crawling across that finish line. And that's the thing, even if, even if cell comms close, like, I've told people that, and it's very important to me that like this is happening for two reasons. One is to raise a bunch of money for veterans, and two is to inspire other people. You know, to build that unbreakable personality um, and keep pushing forward and, and be driven to do something bigger than ourselves. And so, it doesn't matter if we lose sight of the world record time; we're still getting to that finish line, no matter how late in the day it is. If cell comms closed, it, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get to the 26.2 miles no matter what it takes and no matter what time of day it is yeah. so and that and that's what matters and you know break the record or not that's that's the icing on the cake right you know but it's that it's that whole continue to be unbreakable and, mm -hmm. and like we've talked about numerous times you know that positive energy flows into the people around you and so if you're if you're positive and you're going to go out and crush that your, your teammates, you know, especially for you, Sody, like dealing in those small unit teams, like if one person's having a bad day, it cascades. Everybody has a and, bad day. Yeah, and when everybody's on, they bring that bottom person up, you know, and that's and that's a big thing. Like it's a huge thing, you know, and it's, it's something that I learned already way back, and I know that you can agree, way back in the wrestling room, like is where I learned that, you know, Teams, teamwork and, and building that positive attitude and surrounding each other because it's tough and you're getting beat, you know. And oh, yeah. when you're a junior or senior, you might be getting beat by the freshman. Yeah. And it's like, man, like that can, it can take the wind out of your sail, but you don't quit. You just keep showing up to practice and keep getting yeah. better and keep getting better. Yeah. I mean, Sody went from wrestling, his first ever time on a mat was freshman year yeah. to crushing dudes, you know, by his junior year already. Yeah, man, that's like, crazy. It was crazy. There's a, there's a saying in jiu-jitsu, um, the guy that I roll with quite a bit, he's taught me a lot, one of the black belts at our gym, he, he always says the most important skill to learn in jiu-jitsu is tying your belt, and then just keep tying it. Yeah. And because nobody nobody walks onto that mat and doesn't get humbled. It's just the way it is, man. Yeah. You, you're, you, it, it's, a, it's an exercise in humility. You, you find out what you're made of, and, and usually it ain't much, not at the beginning. Yeah. And I guess that kind of, that, that's, I guess my answer to the question is, you know, what unbreakable is, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean you never quit. You know, you talk about guys that say never quit, never quit. Everybody quits. Yeah, Everybody at quits some point, at some point. It. Now, those of us who feel really strongly about not giving up, we might have a higher threshold, but there are people in the world that will legitimately run themselves to death. It's yeah. happened a lot. There's yeah. a, you know, one of the big uh, dirty little secrets of the special operations community, as both of you guys know, is that they, you, there's a lot more casualties from training than there are from combat. And a lot of that, guys passing out underwater, because they just don't, don't want to give up on that breath hold, push themselves yeah. too hard through a workout. Maybe they got sick, they got pneumonia, they got something that they Heat don't want to let anybody know because it, it means something. So, you know, there, there's actually a point of, of diminishing return. But the important thing to know is that all of that preparation and all of that, um, all that grit starts a long time ago. Like you said, with the, with the ruck, we, we, we couldn't do what we did yesterday on a training run if our lives depended on it. I mean, that quit line was miles before what we did yesterday. We yeah. got back to the trucks and we're like, how's your legs? Good. Yeah, I mean, what did we step out to do today? 16 miles, like. Well, you did. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I knew today, this morning, when I woke up, got out of bed, there was going to be no 16 miles for me. <laughs> the tap out bitch right here. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but. You paused it. You paused it for a minute. You'll, you'll, you'll start yeah. the game. Yeah. yeah. But it was, one, it was one of those things like you got to get up and you got to put in the in the work and it's not that bad when it's over it's not that bad we always say and all three of us have shared this statement numerous times is like through suck you build the best times yeah like the best times happen through suck yeah. the worst days of my life are some of my best memories yeah like yeah. well there's you know, an awesome crazy. shirt that says struggle breeds greatness like yeah absolutely yeah. it does because you don't you're not just handed this greatness spoon and they're like all right dude you're awesome yeah like the most people yes. you look up to that uh, a lot of us look up to have come from the you know the struggles, and now they're these these role models that we look up to. For sure, like yeah. yourselves, both of you guys. Like yeah, I, I look up to like I, the struggles that have thing. gone through, and I'm like, man, these guys are doing it. I got to do it. Like it's gonna breed greatness. And that's yeah. what we're doing. I'm glad you brought that up because at the beginning of the podcast, Will brought up uh, a, a friend of mine, Nick the Quick. Uh, 
he had that story that you told about you guys doing that first marathon. You're drinking beer, coming off the couch, knock out your first marathon. Well, yeah. he had that story backwards. And the reason that it came up is because I was, I was talking with a, a, another buddy of mine and discussing the, the goal for the, the Selcon, the 100-pound the rock, and telling him about Will and how this whole thing came to fruition. And one of the things that immediately Nick heard us talking and chimed in and said, oh, you got to know this guy. He's so crazy. He's just such an athlete. He's such a freak. He can do anything. Like he doesn't even, he'll put 100 pounds on his back and run from, you know, run from here to next week and, and it doesn't even bother him. And I'm listening to him and I'm like, that's so unfair, man. That's so unfair to Will. That's so disrespectful. And he didn't mean it this way, obviously. He was trying yeah, to pay yeah. you a compliment. He was trying, you know, he was, he was trying to give you props, but that disrespects the amount of work that you've put in, put in in such there. a profound way because neither one of us could carry that 100 pound pack down the street. And yeah, now you're looking at, I'm not going to say this is a foregone conclusion. There's too many moving parts and too many things that can go wrong. So we got to, you know, be careful Knock about being, yeah, right. Be, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not in the can, not by a long shot, but it, it's, it's looking good. I mean, training's looking really good and yeah. that there's only one yeah. way that happens. It, and it's just through determination and busting your ass. You're putting it's, in the work. It's, it's absolutely, work. it's hard work. It's what, it's what all of us have done, right? Um, even, even with things like the business, like when you first started the business, Jason, it was not going to sleep. It was, you know, being forced oh, your first, to eat Your stuff. first check wasn't $500,000 uh, yeah. the first I'm, thing you yeah. installed? I, I have, uh, I, I have my version of, of PTSD. <laughs> it's like post-traumatic business stress. Yeah. Right? It was, it was gnarly. It, it was, uh, it, it's a, it's a journey. Um, and yeah, it didn't, it wasn't all sunshine and lollipops. That's for sure. It, there's, there's times that it hurts, man. There's just, yeah. I gave up a lot for it, man. I gave up relationships. Um, uh, you know, I, I it was, it, it pulled at the strings of everything that matters to me in my life, but yeah. it wasn't, you know, you guys both know me well enough. I'm not about money. Like no, I, I don't no. care. No, man. You know? That's why you've done so much to help St. Jude, the veteran community. Like that's all money that you could have kept in your pocket, in the pocket of the business, you know, and, and used in a, in a different manner. Right. Yeah. But you yeah. chose as a small business to give tens of thousands of dollars away. And everybody's, everybody's goals are different. I'm not going to shit on anybody that wants to be a, you know, a baller and, um, you know, drive a, you know, Porsche Cayenne turbo to work every day and live, you know, live in the hills. Like that's all, that's all good. That's great. If that, if that's what makes you tick and that's the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, have at it. That's nothing wrong with it at all. But for me, that was never really the thing. It's never, it was never the motivation. It was when I, when I got into it deeply enough that I I knew I couldn't turn back, man, it was a marathon. It was, it was just like that. I hit that 18 mile wall really early in my career. Yeah. And I mean, your business started in 2008. 2005. Or 2005. But yeah. so it was a young business in 2007, 2008 when yeah, that was, that was the housing weird. market went tits up. Yep. And yep. like that everybody crashed. was going out of business. Sody's dad was running a construction, construction. company. Yeah, I was I and was one of the crew guys. And I was like, dark yeah. days, man. Those off. were those yeah. dark days. Yeah. You There's got days. laid off? Your, your old man laid you <laughs> off? Yeah. Well, he just, I know. I mean, I kept working. I just wasn't getting paid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah. exactly like running a business. Yeah. 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 But know? that's what had to happen back then because there was no money. Like, I, any business owner that you talk to, especially in the construction trade, they were worried if they were going to be able to to give their employees a check. Yeah. Because they were still doing the construction work, but nobody had the money to pay them. Right. So they were fronting all this money and then not getting anything back, assuming they were going to get money back. And like, when you talk to people like that, they all say like that was the worst times of their business career, mm-hmm. and tons of businesses were going under. And the cool thing is like, Sody's dad never went under employed the same dudes, made yeah. sure they had work, yeah. made sure they had food on their table. Jason's business never went under. Yeah. Made sure his guys, his crew, always was getting a paycheck, always able to put food on their table. And both of you guys bending over backwards to still help people at the same time. Like, your dad would have bent over backwards to do anything for anybody. Like, I, I know, yeah. you know, because he's, he's helped me out more times than I can count. Right, like, <laughs> and, he, and he's put up with us since we. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a couple of times they wanted to kill us. Saying maybe a lot. Yeah, there's a maybe couple times we were doing burnouts in the Mustang. And and mom busted us. Yeah. But. Oh, it's a Mustang. What I mean, yeah, yeah. you're gonna do burnouts. Oh, yeah, it's exactly. America. Cherry red. It was, it was yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah of course. That was so much fun. <laughs> but then you look at look at those businesses now. Like, I mean, I'm, I don't want to speak for you on it, but like there was times when my dad wasn't collecting a paycheck. He was yeah. pushing it out, and I'm I'm sure you were at oh, yeah. Dire Straits yeah. too. Where you're like, man, I, I just paid all my guys and. And now I got I nothing to I, pay myself. Yeah, I don't even know if I can go put gas in my truck this week. Yeah. This, this isn't something I'm proud to admit, but at one point in my business, 
I, I sold my personal truck. The only thing that, the only thing nice at that point, just a few years into my business, I'd finally gotten to a point where I didn't have to drive a, an old pickup with, with 200,000 miles on it anymore. I could afford to go out and buy myself a, a nice vehicle. And I, and I did. And when things got really dark, I had, you come to a crossroads, you got a choice to make. And yeah. for me, it was, it was easy. It wasn't, it's not something I had to think about very hard. Right. It really comes down to, do I want leather seats and navigation or do I want to hand a paycheck to somebody that woke up yeah. in the morning, yeah. left their home, left their family, Showed up on time. went to bat for me and decided to try to make, try to help me make this business work and they deserve to, to get what I promised them. Right. And so you, to honor those promises and make sure you can continue to honor, honor those promises, you do what you got to do. So it's a, it's a truck who gives a shit, but it's just one of those things that you, that you have to do. Uh, I was married at the time and, and my wife used to really struggle with this back then because she would, she'd get so upset that my people didn't appreciate me. She would say, they don't yeah. even know. They don't know what you're going through. They don't know that you haven't seen a paycheck in six months. They have no idea. They don't even care. And I always laughed at that and I'm like, why should they? Yeah, I this think it's wasn't great. their choice. <laughs> right? It's great leadership, right? Great leadership are leaders that are able to go out and do that. They make sure that their men are taken care of, you know, men or women are taken yep. care of far before themselves. You know, when the leader cares more about themselves than they do their, their men or women, your problems. They are going to fail as a leader. Yeah. Like you will not, your men or women will not follow you wherever you want them to go. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that's super important when, when you talk about combat and stuff like that is, and that, and that's where like Sodi getting that award says right there that men will follow him into fire. And that is what you want. Like that is to me, the definition of a good leader is somebody that your entire group of people will follow you into combat. Yeah. And that, and that's what you insured happen. It's what you, your dad insured happen. Yeah. yeah. It might not be combat, but they're going to go and follow you wherever you want them to follow you to. And that is a good leader. Yeah. <clears throat> a good leader builds that. And uh -huh. I think that that's, you know, it's a, it's a testament to both your dad and, and Jason in business and anybody who was in business then and took care of their guys and made sure that everything was happening for their guys. When, when I had Daniel on here last time, that was a yeah. big thing he said. If that same thing happened again, his first concern would be making sure that his guys are taken care of, that they still have work and that they're getting paid, and then hope that the checks start to come back in like they do yeah. now. You know. And once you get through that struggle, they, they do. Like you're then yeah. you're able to grow your crews. You're able to, you know, donate the money. You're able to, like you said, Jason, money wasn't a thing, so you're able to give that money to good causes like you have, right. like that's your reward through that struggle. And it's, it's awesome. And just even talking about like great leaders and stuff, there's a good book. I'm, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. It's called the mission, the men and me. It's about yeah, a former a Delta book. commander. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just from the title, the mission's first. So what, what's the job we got to do the men to make sure they're taken care of. And then, Oh yeah, by the way, me, if I'm not squared away, then I can't take care of the mission of the men. And, yeah. and right. just guys can take that and women can take that into their, their lives and just say, you know, there is no I in team, but there's a me. So if I'm not squared away, then the team's gonna falter. Right. Yep. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna highlight myself and be arrogant and say it's it's all me. I I did this. I did this. I did this. You're gonna say no. My part to this team, and I was able to help. And now the team did this. And in those in those times, like that's when the team gets through, and you get through your dark times. Yeah. No. I'm those comparisons are huge to me. I, I'm a student of history. I love military history. Um, never, never answered the call myself, but I've always had this massive amount of reverence for what you guys do and, and, and what everybody that, that has come before you uh, is able to do. And to me, that makes the business decisions in, the, in, in those struggles really, really easy. Okay, it, it's, uh, Because the, the truth of the matter is, if men can lead in that manner in life and death situations, then what's a job that's not going right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, it's it's uh, you have to have perspective, man. Perspective is is the the word that summed up my life. I mean, I have so many gifts and so much uh, so much to be thankful for. I mean, what's a little bit of struggle? I think you have to inject that struggle into your life. Oh, you have dude, to yeah. make that happen. You have to make it happen for yourself, dude. Yeah. And like we said before, that struggle, that suck, it makes the best. Like it makes you. I think it makes you into a better person. It makes better, tighter friendships, um, and things uh, like that. You know, like. When you when you struggle through something together, you grow together. Makes a better you know? story too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man, it's cliche. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely, does. man, absolutely, hundred percent. Not using aluminum to sharpen it, you know. No. So. <laughs> Unless there's something out there that I don't know about, but yeah, there probably yeah. is. <laughs> Technology these days. Elon Musk just asked him. He's probably created it. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> who's that? Who's that guy? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Dude, crazy stuff. 
But anyways, we're, we're coming to the end of the amount of time that I can afford to upload. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a little bout of honesty right there. See, Straight we thought, honesty, man. Straight your, honesty. Your wives are upstairs cooking us steak, so I thought it was that, but it turns yeah. out it's the it's Will's bandwidth budget. Yeah, and he's yeah, it's my budget for uploading. He's man. actually he's, recording. Which is good. He did this because these are he's the least things. comfortable chairs on the planet. Oh, my so God. He, he's, he's, and this you is left, on purpose. left my chew upstairs. Well, <laughs> I needed that. So. You, guys are, you guys are welcome. You know? <laughs> man, this is, this is how to be unbreakable. You yeah, sit in one of these chairs for an hour and talk. this iron rod up your backside. This isn't Joe Rogan's studio, all right? <laughs> you were in my basement just partying our faces I off. I love it. I love it. Minor. Vodka, water, it all looks the same, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. This is my vodka right here, right? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, haven't had a drink in a long time, man. Dude, I'm about weeks. Yeah. yeah Training. I just, right I just hit a month on the 17th. That's, that's the real sacrifice right there. Yeah. For, for <laughs> us, it is. That's struggle, the real struggle. Man. It yeah. is a struggle. Yeah. yeah but, and, and, you know, props to anybody who can do it, you know, or. or whatever they put their mind to and doing it like i don't care i don't care what you're doing out there like whatever you're doing or whatever your goal is put your mind to it and, and achieve it if, the, if you want to stop drinking do that go out and achieve it if you want to go you know start a business go start one like yeah. nobody is stopping you but you doesn't even have to be that big man run a mile yeah run a mile Quarter mile. Get outside, play with the kids. Start yeah. a diet. I was talking to a friend uh, a couple of weeks ago that that went to the uh, the gala and was so moved by the stories of everything that that, that you know some of you guys have gone through. And, and Rob Jones, our, our speaker, that he wanted to get involved somehow. And his way to get involved is the Ruck March. But he called me and he said, "Man, I haven't run at all in forever. What do I do? What's my plan? How do I get after it?" And I said, "Run a mile. Yeah. Just just go outside tomorrow. Run a mile." Yeah. And he's like, "Well, that's not going to do anything. Yeah, so well. it's going it's a start." Yeah. To start. Gets you off the couch. Gets you yeah. doing something. It's the most yourself. important thing you can do, and it's starting it. Yeah. Yeah. Tie your belt. Yep. There you go. Tie your that's belt. That's it, man. Tie your belt. I love it. All, All right. right. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. You guys got anything you want to say to the people quick? Yeah, let's eat some steak. Oh, wait, that wasn't... No, it's no, up to the people. Yeah. Sorry, you guys can't eat steak. Uh, yeah. no, well, you, well, you guys can steak. eat steak, yeah. but we're going to eat some steak yeah. for sure. <laughs> Highly recommended. Dude. Thanks, uh, thanks, Hody and Jason, for coming on the podcast. Uh, yeah, man. Props for everything you're doing here. This is so cool. Thanks it's going to be, it's gonna be big someday. Yeah, 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 yeah right? We were just messing around. Steve. Next thing you know, we're getting recorded. And <laughs> this is probably going to get uploaded. Yeah, 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 nice. yeah, tie your belt. Yeah. 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 Take, take quit out of your vocabulary. Yeah. That's that's exactly, you sound like Jacko right now. <laughs> that's exactly that's what it's going to be called. Love that guy. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Remember, always remain unbreakable. We'll see you guys next time. Right on.